Today on CityCast Boise, it's not just the price of eggs and the total it costs to fill up your tank. Inflation is also affecting your utility bill. Water, power, and natural gas rates are all edging up in Boise. So how much should you expect to pay? Our Hey Boise newsletter editor, Blake Hunter, has the breakdown for us. It's Monday, May 8th. I'm Frankie Barnhill filling in for Emma Arnold, and this is what Boise's talking about. Hey, Blake. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks, Frankie. Okay, so I want to have you help me break down what the hell is going on with all of these utility uh, price hikes. Uh, You wrote about this recently in the Hey Boise newsletter, and it's kind of complicated, so it's worth talking through. Is it, first off, is it just a coincidence that power, gas, and water are all going up around the same time or or potentially could be going up around the same time? Not really. Uh, Most of the time, changes get implemented uh, on June 1st, so it's kind of the season. Um, um, the Idaho Public Utilities Commission, which we'll get into a bit more, uh, typically does their assessments and sets rates around April. Also, you know, part of the reason that they're all going up right now is because we've, you know, just seen record inflation over the last year. And also there are some companies blaming inflation for right. raising their prices, which we'll <laughs> yeah. get into again. Yeah. But yeah, so it, it's not really a coincidence. This I don't know necessarily if this happens often that all of them go up at the same time, but they all kind of get assessed this time of year. Yeah, it's just, it's definitely been making headlines. Um, And okay, so this obviously it affects homeowners directly thinking about like people on fixed incomes, of course, who, you know, hey, they've already got their budget set. And so any changes can really Mm -hmm. make a difference. But it also affects renters, um, maybe not as directly where, I mean, you pay for power um, as a renter. But usually like water is folded into your rent, right? So Mm -hmm. potentially even renters will see a change on this, of course. Yeah, totally. Okay, so let's talk about exactly (laughs) Who is making these decisions? Um, I think, you know, an important note is that the Public Utilities Commission, the PUC, that's a board of three men right now. Two of them were appointed by Republican Governor Brad Little, one by former Republican Governor Butch Otter, and they have a pretty big say in these decisions, right? So it's it's not just like, even though Idaho Power and these other companies are saying we want to raise rates, they can't just do it carte blanche. Yeah, and two of the three of these commissioners, um, you can't have unanimously uh, from one party. So they're not all Republicans. Yep, good point. But the public process for this is kind of, you know, I'm pretty new to this, but typically what happens is these companies, so Idaho Power, for example, Intermountain Gas, whatever, they request different rate hikes, which it can get pretty complicated because there's different kinds of rate increases I've gotten really lost in the files many times already, (laughs) but basically they request these things. The PUC says kind of this is what's going on, tells the public about it, and then people can weigh in with public testimony hearings or just written comments and that kind of thing. And then basically the PUC considers that and kind of looks at the whole picture and then makes the final decision. Yeah. And they, it's not necessarily they're like yes or no. They're like, eh, we're going to go in the middle with this rate hike that you want or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's get into specifics. Let's start with Idaho Power. Mm-hmm. So why do they say their price needs to go up? Why is this necessary? Okay. So a few reasons for that is, you know, Idaho is pretty lucky in that we have a large, large chunk of our electricity comes from hydropower. Um, right. All those dams. Yep. Yeah. Which obviously the dams themselves uh, prevent some pretty serious environmental issues. And it is still much cleaner than fossil fuel usage. Yeah, bur- burning coal. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's great. But as we've talked about many times before, we're in the middle of a drought. And so this year should be a little bit better. But, you know, the last two years we've been able to produce just a little bit less hydropower. And so they say that that's part of the reason that they need to increase it. Additionally, because of the rising cost of natural gas, they have kind of folded that in as well. And Idaho Power requested just over a 10% increase. So, you know, when I've talked about this with like Hey Boise readers and look through like public comments and things like that, people aren't super, super upset about this one. Um, We'll get into the big ones, but, um, or the big one. Um, But, you know, it's still something to kind of scrutinize a little bit. 
Yeah, and that what does that equal? Like eleven bucks. Yeah, it's per just month? over eleven bucks per month for average residents. So it's again, the rates are a little bit different for commercial uses. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Intermountain Gas, they've yeah. asked, they're looking for a much lower increase. I read uh, about 4%, 4 half about, which would equal a little over $2 per household, which, yeah, doesn't seem like much, but it could add up uh, with everything else. What's, what's going on with Intermountain Gas? So a thing to notice about Intermountain Gas's uh, increase here is that they already had one this year. So they, they implemented an oh. increase of 16.6% for average for residential customers in February. Oh, gosh. And okay. that was just under $9 per month per average residence. And then they're requesting this one on top of it. Um, so that's... So- 20% almost, or yeah, more than 20, that. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, looking at almost $11 per month uh, per average resident there. So the reasoning behind them um, is, again, because of mostly natural gas. And also kind of they've said, you know, just the cost of training equipment and services and that kind of thing is all kind of folded into this stuff as well. Um, Production costs. Yeah, yeah, pay for workers, all those, all those things. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, but there's the big one. We've been leading up to it, which is, I'm going to, I think this is how I pronounce the company's name, Veolia. <laughs> I think they're French, so I want to put like a French accent on it. Um, maybe it'll make me feel better if I say it that way. I'll leave that to you, yeah. <laughs> um, so they're the water company, or basically they control most of the water coming out of most of the taps in Boise. Um, so am I reading it right that they want, they're, they're looking for a 24.1% increase? That was their request? Yes, that's correct. And, you know, I just want to say, too, this is this is just such a perplexing thing of like, how did we land with having like these utility companies just have like such a monopoly over, you know, um, you know, a lot of the public comments around this are just like, I don't have the option to take my money somewhere else kind of thing, right. which there's a long history behind public utilities, of course, but um, or public utility companies. But yeah, they wanted to increase their costs by 24.1%. Obviously, that's a huge jump. And their reasoning was, you know, we've already invested all of this other money into better infrastructure, you know, lots of different facilities and that kind of thing. And we need this increase to kind of balance that out. Veolia is the largest water service provider in the world. They bought Suez, you know, a few years ago for like over $5 billion dollars. They're fine. They're, 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 <laughs> they're not. <good. laughs> they're fine. Um, and so a lot of people were really, really angry about this one. And I personally think rightly so. I mean, a 24% increase is pretty incredible. Like you mentioned earlier, like people on fixed incomes, that's that's a hard that's a hard sell. Um, and in my opinion, it didn't help that one of their spokespersons was like, that's just like a cup of Starbucks a month. You know, it's just oh, like seven dollars. It's just like the latte yeah, argument. We yeah, love it. Let's let's do that. Let's get into that, please. Um <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, they, they also kind of blamed inflation. And it's like, yeah, billionaires complaining about inflation. It's like, well, you made it. Um, but <laughs> not really. Obviously, it's way more complicated yeah, yeah, than yeah. that. But. Right. There's so many factors. But I mean, God, 24.1%. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's just a lot, a lot, a lot. So yeah. I have to ask, though, too, just really fast. You mentioned the drought affecting Idaho Power, which uses geo or which uses hydropower uh, a lot. Is there anything to do with the fact that, you know, we live in the high desert and uh, there's less water going around these days? Is that part of this at all? You know, they mentioned that, but that just like on paper, that's not really the pressing issue there. Um, That's not what's going on. Their main thing was basically like we've already invested into providing better services and infrastructure. And so this is what we need to cover that. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So they've already gone in front of the PUC. I hope power and Intermountain Gas haven't yet. So what did they say? So the PUC didn't really clarify much in their actual decision. Um, But all of the comments that they heard, and they heard a lot of comments. I I didn't listen to all of the public hearings, but all of their written comments online that you can see are um, really (laughs) angry of just like, what? Like, are you kidding me? Kind of thing. And so what the PUC eventually did without providing like much reasoning, like I said, they implemented a 7.06% increase. So it's about $2.20 per month for average residents. Not too bad. Considerably better than 24%. You know, it's less than a third of that. But we'll see what happens next year if, the, you know, if they try to increase again. 
Right, right. Maybe it's been kicked down the can, or maybe the PUC, PUC sent a message like, "Hey, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's yeah. that's fascinating." Okay, so so what's next with the other two with Idaho Power and Intermountain uh, Gas? Given given the Veolia increased impact, um, how much will the average Boisean uh, who uses all three of those services, um, which I suppose some people might not use, like gas, for example, yeah. um, how much will they see their bill go up? Well, so the Veolia increase went in effect on last Monday, so it was May 1st. Okay. Uh, the Idaho Power and Intermountain Gas ones, I believe, will go into effect in June 1st, whatever the change you know, is accepted. So it, the average Boise residents who uses all three of these services from comparing January of 2023 to June of 2023 will be paying $23.95 more per month, which is a big chunk of money. We've talked so much on this podcast about... <laughs> just affordability in Boise in general, housing costs, all of those things. So any kind of additional like 25 bucks per month can really add up. Right. Well, I guess I should be cutting back on my latte budget. I think um, you should. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the bottom line. Okay. Thanks so much, Blake, for breaking this down for us. I appreciate it. Thanks, Frankie. And one more thing to share before we sign off. Next Tuesday, voters in Meridian, CUNA, and Ada County will get the chance to elect new leaders to their library boards. According to the Idaho Statesman, two candidates are challenging incumbents in Meridian after that library district beat back a citizen-led effort to dissolve the libraries. One of the CUNA candidates says she's open to removing controversial books from that library's shelves. We'll put a link in the show notes for more info on how to register and show up to vote next Tuesday. Hey, thanks for listening to CityCast Boise today. Emma Arnold will be back in the host chair tomorrow with a super helpful guide to finding last minute Mother's Day gifts. See you then. Thank you.